Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's time for Food Plot Chronicles, season five. Season five? Season five. 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 Season number five. We're so excited to be back. Got a lot of cool stuff to show you this year. We just bought another 30 acres adjacent to our Camp Cutlet property. It's gonna allow us another 10 to 15 acres of tillable ground. So you know what that means. We got some work to do. Now, one of our goals with this property is to create some more destination food. And by destination food, I mean putting in corn and beans in preparation for the late season. For any of you who have been following us over the years, you know that the adverse weather at Camp Cutlet is off the chains. But with that adverse weather, it usually means big bucks. So it's important for us to plant our food plots accordingly. In this first episode, we are gonna be taking a look at one of these new fields. Our goal is to get at least three and a half acres of grain in this new field. This ground has not been worked in over 30 years. So we're gonna have to try a new tactic on Food Plot Chronicles. We're gonna be plowing and we're gonna be disking in preparation to get corn and beans into this new spot. Guys, I can hear that tractor fired up. Dino's on it. Let's get up to Camp Cutlet, and see what he's doing. Well, May the 26th here in Western New York. Beautiful day. I love saying beautiful. I don't know why. Just beautiful day. Just beautiful. Got the Mahindra out with neighbor Corey's plow on it and uh, we have this field here it's a big field that we just acquired it backs up it's adjacent to the rest of our property where we're working on some clover plots and mainly a lot of our property that way is is super dense cover with that being dense cover we've never had good destination food this has been a hay field for since since we've been alive and it's not even a very super good one there's no clovers or anything really in it um, so we're going to convert this into a destination food food plot. Not sure exactly what we're gonna do yet, but probably gonna plant. It might be in, entirely in corn for year one. I'm not really sure. Either corn and beans or all corn, and it'll give deer more cover to uh, just stay stealthy and unpressured up here, and then we could brush hog the back end of it up near the woods later in the season to potentially get, uh, get some food on the ground for them. So, really excited about this this project this is a 30 acre piece that we added but it's going to improve the rest of our property which is about 85 acres behind it on on this side of the road it's going to improve it so much and we're so so amped just to be able to see what this what this does um so this is a new new project we haven't plowed before on food plot chronicles um i've only done it actually once in my life so this will be interesting um, to try to get used to it again because this is all green we didn't have time to come in here and spray it and the farmer was potentially going to come in here and hay it and we didn't want to take any hay from him or anything like that but he said go ahead and do it so i'm going to turn this over hopefully the green uses a natural fertilizer for whatever crop we're going to put in here and we got nothing but sunshine in the next two weeks which is good and bad but this will dry out super quick and then we'll be able to hit it with a disc hopefully knock it down and get it all smoothed out and then hopefully in the next week or so we can plant with a chance of rain in the in the forecast so gonna start plowing fingers crossed i don't jack this field up Plowing a field that's never been plowed is uh, no joke. It's definitely uh, definitely challenging. Doesn't go as smooth as you'd like. Some of the sod, this field is so uneven. I'm sorry, getting a plow, especially a three-point plow, a little bit different with a uh, pull-behind plow, but a three-point plow it wants to level with the tractor and if i'm coming this way my tractor's angled this way even when i'm in the ferrule roll and when i'm up on this hill i'm angled the other way even when i'm in the ferrule roll so it's kind of kind of too hard to get the disc to perfectly level on every pass so it's definitely challenging you get spots like this 
where that sod just doesn't flip all the way over and it's happened in a few spots but first first years i knew knew it was going to be very challenging to get this field turned i mean like i said can't stress that in our lifetime hunting here this field's always been a uh, a hay field so it's got a lot of grown a lot of years of sod just caked in there and unworked ground so it's it's uh very challenging but awesome to be able to start a new beginning and a new reset on this field we got our work cut out ahead of us there's going to be some challenges the dirt looks great and one thing that's going to be a benefit is unlike a lot of other plots on our property this is way up on this hill it's going to drain very nice so i have confidence we're going to be able to get the soil right plant the right things and uh, hopefully have good success in this field but holy moly i'm about halfway done plowing this three acres with this two bottom plow it's just gonna take take time you just gotta work through it but just taking a break from my neck and everything gonna get back in and try to get this done in the next couple hours before dark here let it let it dry out in this nice sunny days we got ahead of us nice breezy sunny days it should dry out super nice and then the next three four days i'll come in here and start knocking it down with the disc it's starting to get dark so i wanted to show you guys this before it did the lights just came on on the tractor down there it's definitely a lot more clay gravel thicker soil a little more moisture in here up here it's real sandy break breaks apart real nice but this field is un Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's been an unreal four hours trying to get this all plowed, plowed up, but just about getting there. I got a little bit left to do on this left side up here, but everything else is done. I'm gonna let her set for a couple of days in the sun and we'll uh, we'll try to get this disc and knock down and nice dirt and ready to plant. But basically what I did, and my neighbor pointed this out to me, but I basically split the field in half with a with the two bottom plow. I plowed right up the middle of the field and then you turn around and then you throw your ferrule row in into the other ferrule row from when your your previous first pass um, and this way once you start plowing the field you can start literally making use and you're continuously plowing if you do it any other way um, it could take you a lot longer if you have to you know do certain passes and then run to the end of the field and then pass again this allows you to keep the flow going and it worked out it worked out well what's up tag and brag nation we are kicking off food plot chronicles with the springtime destination food plots. That's what we're focusing on right now is the destination food plots. We have now three of them uh, on our property here in Western New York. Really our mindset has been have several destination fields and then more towards the centers of our property or wherever we can, we have these kill plots or just smaller clover and uh, turnip plots that we'll plant in the fall. And those will be targeted, you know, there'll be a different strategy for hunting those and the deer might not destine there as much, but they will spend time in those as well. But we want destination food, especially cold weather food and some of our bigger fields that can withstand the browse pressure throughout the uh, summer. That's the biggest thing is when I say destination food, normally we mean three acres or more um, typically. And I usually we usually refer to that as being grain whether it's soybeans or corn you could have destination food that big with turnips and other and other sorts but we usually refer to corn and soybeans because up here in New York where we get a lot of snow and cold weather the beans and the corn are the sought food especially late season when the snows hit so this is our third destination field that we have now created this is a project it was tough to, to, to uh, plow up now we're going to start disking. I told you, it's like riding a bull. My goodness, my neck and my back are going to be feeling great tomorrow. It's always tough with the two bottom plow and then coming back over with a three point disc. You don't have huge equipment, you're going to be doll strap. Oh! 
kicking my ass, kicking my body. It's like riding, It's I would say it's worse than riding a bull because you're riding it for about six hours and it is literally a bull. I mean, this field is so bumpy from plowing it and all this sod in here. Oh my gosh, I thought it would be a lot better after the first pass with the disc and it's a little better, but not much. I mean, it's coming. This The dirt up here, I mean, look at it. It's very, it's very sandy, very powdery dirt. It's just getting rid of this. That's the challenge. There's just, there's clumps of grass and sod everywhere creating bumps and stuff like that with the tractor. It's just trying to knock all that stuff down because we plowed it green. And that's why all that stuff's in here. And it's, it was, that's expected. I mean, the first year you turn a field that hasn't been turned in 30, 50, I don't even know how many years or ever. We knew this was gonna be a battle, but holy moly, it's kicking my ass. But two rounds of the disc are done. I'm about out of time tonight here and unfortunately I gotta go out of town and uh, I won't be back for about five days which is I think June the 5th so we're, uh, we're gonna be planting a little bit later than I wanted to hopefully we plant next week hopefully we get a rain in the forecast because right now it's been as dry as, as can be and there's no rain in the forecast so I'm not in a rush to get to get everything in the ground right now but i know as soon as we see a rain in the forecast it's going to be a it's going to be a scramble so oh i'm gonna have to get back next week this is going to need another disc or two before it's ready to plant at least down there it's a little bit better up here but a couple areas need just need extra work so dad was up on the uh other field he just got that fully tilled this one's about done and uh, we got one more to do with the destination food destination food and then it's on to the next batch so I finished up the two discs two passes with the discs up on that field destination field that will probably be all corn maybe split of beans corn but it might be all corn this year but we always talk about access being the most important thing got the road right behind me right here and this field's fairly secluded because it's way up on top we got this little island of woods that kind of blocks that back field um, got a couple of acres of just hay grass up in this front and i just plowed and disked about a five yard wide strip all the way up to the field and that way we can brush hog this little wood line right here, this little divider in between two fields. We'll brush hog a path in between it and we'll be able to tuck in here and be blocked with the four wheeler or walking from all of our cover and the whole food plot when we're getting in and out. So huge, huge benefit is, is your access and uh, like I said, this is this should help us get in and out undetected all the time. It'll be awesome. Be able to hide behind either sorghum or gra or uh, corn. We'll plant right here and get right behind it, and we'll be able to hunt the top of this field. Oh, access will be on point, so pretty pretty badass. Damn! I just want to send a shout out to Rocky for partnering with us on this food plot endeavor once again. We are extremely grateful for the partnership and allowing us to bring this to use. Now you can see how much work that was. Dino was riding a bull when he was trying to man that track and we don't even have seed in the ground yet. I say we, Dino and my dad are doing all the work up there. But as we often say, when you're food plotting, the prep work is as if not more important than actually sowing the seed. So this field is prepped and we got two others to show you next time. But next week, we will be planting seed on this very field. So get your popcorn ready. Thank you again for following along and we'll see you right back here next week on Food Plot Chronicles. It's back, baby. We are back. We are back. We are getting Food Plot Chronicles back. You knew it.